Well, welcome back everyone. Today's uh, fossil preparation is going to be this block here, which contains the skull and partial skeleton of a, uh, of a carnivore called Hesperocyon, which lived 30 million years ago. You can see on the left-hand side of this block, as it was found, you can see the skull emerging, and there's various other bones which are around this block, which are ready to prep out. To give you a sense of what Hesperocyon might have looked like, here's a, a, a sketch that I did a few years ago, um, or reconstruction of a Hesperocyon based on another skull that I'd prepped out. As you can see, it's fairly dog or fox-like, which actually is pretty important because Hesperocyon is known as, the, as one of the first true dogs or canids. That's the, the family that contains foxes and wolves, jackals, dingoes, and all the dogs that are around us now. So let's get into this time-lapse uh, fossil preparation part of the video. As you can see here, I'm starting on the exposed skull of the Hesperocyon, which is on the left-hand side of the block. And as you can see, I'm using a scalpel, as well as in a second, I start using a pin vise with a tungsten carbide, a very sharp stylus. Now you can only use these hand tools when the matrix is soft enough. And the Brule formation, which dates back 30 million years ago, is quite a soft mudstone slash siltstone, um, which is very easy to work with, with manual tools. And obviously when you're working around skulls and tiny teeth, I tend to find that uh, when you use pneumatic air tools, which I will do a little later on for the rest of the block, um, it, the vibrations can lead to damage uh, to the skull or the teeth. It's very easy to chip a tooth. Whereas if you're just pushing a scalpel or a hand tool, you have much greater control. But obviously you can really only do this with soft matrix. You can't do this with some of the, um, the tougher limestones, uh, for example, on the Yorkshire coast, which I also prep quite a, quite a bit of. Um, so it's a bit of a luxury being able to use some of the hand tools. As you can see here, uh, the matrix is incredibly soft and actually uh, with a t small bit of pressure, this uh, section of the block uh, popped off. Now this was something that I planned for because what I wanted to do was prep all around this skull and, uh, and, and make sure that it had, you had a 360 view of the skull on both sides. What you tend to find with these skulls is the exposed side uh, where the collector has found it is often a little bit weathered and worn. And the reverse side of this, uh, which has been protected from all the elements, is often quite pristine. And as you'll see in a second, when I really prep out the reverse side, which has been protected from the elements, the teeth, uh, the orbit, and every other part of, um, of this skull is actually in perfect condition, which is why I wanted to prep out this skull. This will then be replaced and reattached to the matrix uh, so that it's in the original position, but prepped on both sides. If you're wondering what the liquid is um, that's sometimes brushed on to the bone as I'm exposing it, that's a chemical called Paraloid B72, which when diluted with acetone to about three to 4% dilution, um, gives a great chemical to help preserve uh, fossil bone. So it, uh, when brushed on, it seeps into all those little cracks and fissures, some not even visible to the human eye. Uh, and it really gives that bone strength um, and helps with, uh, with uh, preservation. All of the equipment that I'm using I'll um, put in the uh, description below so you've got that for reference. So here is the final prepped version of the skull part 
of this. As you can see, that's the weathered side, which was exposed to the element. And this is the side which wasn't. And the teeth are in great condition. In fact, that side of the skull is absolutely perfect. That I'll then reattach to the main bone block. But before I do, I'm gonna prep out some of the rest of the bone block itself. Um, apart from some of the partial skeleton of the Hesper Hesperocyon, there's also this, which is a really unusual jawbone, um, which is associated in this block. This is, of course, not part of the Hesperocyon, but is in actual fact an oreodont jaw, which I prep from, from both sides. Um, for whatever reason, when this Hesperocyon died, and what looks as though it was probably scavenged because the bones are, are all a bit jumbled up, it was also jumbled up with the lower jaw of, a, of an oreodont, which was a very common herbivorous animal 30 million, uh, 30 million years ago. So it's interesting to have these two aspects associated together and it makes a really nice display feature when it's finished as you can see. So thanks very much for watching. You're about to see the final piece which I'm really pleased with. Um, if you want to see more of these please um, uh, click on the link and subscribe. There's plenty more to come. Thanks very much.